Right folks, let's uh, start with the box itself. It's a very nice presentation, I have to say. I put a bit of effort into the rebranding of Flames of War and uh, the box itself. That's proper started. That'll keep your components nice and safe on the way to you. Um, and it's got some nice painting ideas on here as well, showing you the use of some of the storage and um, the nice weathered 8 to 8. Um, and on the back, some contents, but this will all be fairly familiar to you. Uh, let's have a look at the contents. This is what we'll be painting. Uh, now just take care when you're emptying the box because this stuff comes loose. Components can break off as well um, from the sprues. So watch what you're doing. And you've got a couple of sheets of decals. This should hopefully be enough to do everything you need. Bases for your 88s and your tank commander figures. And then you've got the 88s and I have to say I really like painting 88s. They're really interesting guns with the cruciform trails on them and a big shield. So you can put a lot, a lot of effort into them and um, this is a really, really nice kit. You can see it's not only got the ammunition boxes, it's also got shells and even spent shells. So you can really make a bit of an effort when you're basing these and get them um, get a bit of character into them. Bases themselves are quite large, so it might be possible to do something on the bases to show them dug in, uh, perhaps sandbags or such like. So uh, onto the tanks, and here we've got the five Panzer three sprues. One thing of note is the engine deck has got two different versions, one on each side, which is a good touch. Saves a bit of space on the sprue, just make sure that you follow the instructions, which I'll, sh I'll show you in a minute, and use the right one. And there's so many different little components that you would have to choose between one or the other, depending what uh, variant you're going to make. So just take your time. Um, and there's a bit of storage on here, there's some spear track, uh, a box, uh, some good old jerry cans, and a, a spare wheel. So. Uh, you can do a bit of personalisation with these. You don't have to place everything one per item on each tank. Each tank you can build them up, maybe have a couple of boxes on one, more jerry cans on one than another. Uh, just do something a bit different to uh, shake up how they look. But uh, overall they, they look really quite sharp. Nice depth to the panels. The tools themselves look quite good. Uh, you know, plastic kits. The tools can be a little bit spindly but these are fairly chunky so it should be quite easy to paint and of interest is always the track and the running gear. You won't really be able to tell so much from this view but the, um, the track's actually fully sculpted on the front and on the top so you've got the full track detail and some nice detail inside there on the, um, the lower hull. And then on to the Panzer IVs. The tracks are really nice on these Panzer IVs. Once again with the, the sculpting and the, the detail of the bogies that you can see there. You've got your different gun types. A little bit of storage as well, similar in nature. Now you've got a nice wee jerry can there so you can stack them up somewhere. A couple of spare wheels. Really quite nice all round. I, I quite like the look of that. The, um, the decking on the mud guards there, on the fenders, that'll, that'll, that'll take a nice wash. So that's, that's good. Uh, it's a bit deep, uh, as it, you know, deeper than it should be for the scale, but it should take a wash and show up quite nice. So they're looking good too. And then you also have the cards and the box for the new fully fledged version 4 way of playing the game. Why well, a quick look at the 88 crew. These are not too bad. They'll paint up well enough. I've seen more detail on other plastic. 
kits such as these uh, Americans, you see that they're actually a little bit, I don't know, the strut needs to be a little bit smaller, but it might just be a matter of, uh, I don't know if you can see that okay, maybe tiny little bit smaller. Certainly they look smaller than the metal equivalents, but they'll be fine. They look nice on that big base. Um, it's a softish kind of plastic, well, really very soft. So you probably have to be careful how you handle them once you've painted them. The big base should prevent any problems there. Uh, and I've also got an assembly instruction, really nice and easy to follow. A black dot or a white dot, depending on what version you want to put together. And possibly a grey dot, but that's not a very good photocopy. So you may want to check if you're at all unsure the Flames of War um, website. So there you go. Lots of building to do next. Hell of a lot of building to do next. Uh, but looking forward to these guys. Looking forward to painting something that is not necessarily green or um, a tritone camel for a change as well. Uh, so I shall come back to you on this with the assembly completed and any thoughts on how that went, any pitfalls, anything to watch out for. I forgot to mention you also get the rules, though um, because they're in a box with all these plastic sprues, they're not necessarily going to come out in the best condition. Something to be uh, aware of, they're going to be rattling around in there. There's no separation inside the box, but that's your giveaway rule set really to get you started and it will certainly do fine even with a bit of, a bit of damage. That's the assembly completed on the Rommel's Africa core box. It was fairly straightforward technically and as much as the standard tools that you would normally use are sufficient to do the job. So we'll start with the Panzer threes. These were the easiest tanks to put together in the box. The, um, um, the, the hull is all one piece, the front and the back. It's got a panel that, that gets stuck on the back, but the front and the back is all one piece. So you don't have any push-pull effect when you're putting the thing together. Uh, couple of issues, one of them of my own making, I spent ages making sure I knew what way to put this panel on because it's double sided and um, got the right configuration and then proceeded to forget about it and stick it on wrong so that was me just being stupid. I've stuck with that for the long barrels and I've done it correctly for the short barrel 75s, uh, 50s even. Now there is an issue with, to my mind, with the the guns, the mantlets in two pieces, and that means that there's a line that's visible and could only be cleaned up with a great deal of work, especially because of all, all this detail that is around the line and passes the line passes through, and that's because the, you stick the bottom half of the mantlet on and then the top half that carries the gun. So it's not ideal. Um, it allows, I suppose, more economic use of the sprue and a wider range of weapons but you've got to be careful make sure that you're pushing this top part down onto the bottom part not back onto the inner part if you push it back you will create a gap so you've got to be pushing it down but other than that the Panzer threes were really straightforward to put together the Panzer fours just required a bit more care because the front of the hull is separate and the back of the hull has a panel that's separate too. So if you just if you built the the entire lower hull and then stuck the upper hull on top, there was a possibility of a gap, front or back. So you, you basically had to make the tub, so to speak, of the hull front, back, top and bottom, and then make sure you had your joints where they were where they were clearly seen at the front and the top of the rear. Make sure they were nice and tight. Don't have to worry too much about the bottom because the running gear is going to hide that. They've got um, a similar issue with the gun mantlet, not on the short uh, 75, but on the long 75, it's got the split. 
through the maplet as well, which isn't very, it's not very attractive. It's not as prominent on the sides of the maplet because it's smaller, but it's more prominent on the length. But other than that, it's okay. You could probably fill that without too much difficulty. Now the 88s, these were fairly straightforward. I still have the um, the toe hook to put on it, I forgot about that, I shall do that in a minute. Just make sure when you're making the cruciform section that you lie it in a nice flat position to, to ensure the arms you're putting on are straight. I'll be keeping it in two parts for painting. The um, the mounting of the gun comes in two parts, so you have to be careful that you're getting these recoil tubes level, but at the same time as you're moving these around you'll have this in position, so you have to make sure that it's going as straight as possible through the length of the, the, the gun. And it's quite tricky to be honest, even this one's a little bit off, it's quite tricky because as you're squeezing back and forward it's wanting to pivot back and forward. The gun shield itself goes on without any great problems. You just best to do it when things are not completely set so that you can make sure that you're getting this all this uh, through and then past because you've got to come in and kind of down as well to get all this through the gap. So do it before it's completely dry. Now there's uh, quite a lot of storage in the kits. There's no uh, rolls of tarps or sort of bedding or anything. But plenty of boxes, spare wheels, uh, jerry cans, jerry can racks. So you can really have some character. Spare track as well. You can see it can just go on the front, but it can also uh, go on uh, the top of turrets. It's certainly on the pans of four. Pans of three, it's too wide. You can see the difference. But there you go, that's, that's to help give the uh, turret a bit more character. And not, ev not every one of these has got spare track on it, you know, just to break things up. The jerry can racks, I've got one place there you can see on top of the turret. It's something I've seen in historical pictures. It seems a bit daft to me because it blocks the view from the cupola, but it's certainly something that was done for real. And then other jerry can racks, I've got them in the back. You can put a, a bit more on the rear deck, on the engine deck of the Panzer threes than you can on the Panzer fours. You can see spare boxes and, and spare wheels. But the Panzer fours have got a smaller engine deck, so it's not um, not so practical to put anything on there. And it's certainly not something that I've seen a lot of historical sources. It's more along on the back and along the running boards. Now you can see I put. Jerry cans here, spare wheels here, and this is the only bit that I've done that's not in the box. I've created a little re bit of retaining material. If you imagine that was a field modification to allow them to put that there uh, to keep the wheels on. So that was quite simple. That's very, very thin plastic card, but you could do it with uh, thick paper or thin card cardboard and basically just stuck the piece on and then cut it to length stuck the sides on and cut them to length. Now I've left this piece unfinished just so I can show you what I mean. The middle bit was cut to length and the sides stuck on. Nothing more complicated than that. And then I just try to be as straight as possible. Nick it off, same another side. And then that'll just take a little bit with a knife, now that it's nice and dry, just to take the edge off it. But then you get that nice field mod look that helps explain how those wheels are going to stay on the side. So generally speaking, the build is on all of these is quite chunky. As you can see with the barrels, you know, they're not slender. A modeler wouldn't like that, but me as a war gamer, I find it's very 
encouraging because I'm confident that they're going to be tough enough to stand up to the rigours of playing. Let's face it, they're going to get dropped at some point, snagged on something at some point, so it's better that they're stronger than uh, delicate and, and realistic in proportions. The other storage and the tools are of a nice proportion as well, so I can easily pick all that detail out. This, I've seen like details like this, for instance, with the, the cleaning rods, be very, very shallow in other kits, and, and this will be a lot easier to shade and highlight. When you're sticking the storage on, by the way, there's points, especially when you're putting things on the back panel, where there may be bolt heads or such like that are stopping a flush, a flush fit. So just make sure you shave them down uh, before you uh, glue it down. General advice, when you're putting the storage on, anything is obviously dry fitting, it will certainly help you. Um, you'll be used to it. By the time you've done one, you'll be ready to do the rest. So do your dry fitting so you know exactly what you're looking for. Decide on what couplers are going to be open, what um, crewmen uh, you're going to be using. But otherwise, generally speaking, a lot of work just because of the volume, the numbers rather. Um, Lots of pitfalls, just got to be careful, watch out that engine deck, watch how you're putting these front and back pieces all in at one, one time. Watch the scun mantlet that it doesn't have too big a split. But generally speaking, these guys are ready for paint. And I'm going to be using Tamiya paint for the Africa core box set. Uh, it's, I've got a nice sand colour which will compare well against the colour choices I have for the Montes Desert Rat Box. So please come back for part two when I shall get stuck into the painting, which for me is the most interesting bit. This is the, the legwork, this is the grafting. Uh, the painting is where things really start to uh, come alive. Any questions, stick them down below and uh, good luck with your own uh, with your own box set, guys, once you start uh, assembling it. Just be careful, as I said, think about what you're doing and watch for those uh, gaps that, that, that are the new danger points, front and backs, and, um, and the mantlet. And of course, don't be an idiot like me and put the engine deck on in the wrong orientation. <laughs>